All right, so in this one, we're going to try and organize this so it looks a little bit better and a little bit closer to a realistic project. So I'm going to be doing it for this project, this video, um, or this series, I should say. So we're going to actually end up making a MVP landing page for the Tri Django series, um, and more specifically, the one that we're currently working on. And of course, it's going to include that email sign up letter. So we want to get rid of the example page that we were working with um, before. All right, we don't have to get rid of it. I'm just not going to use it. So going back into views.py, I want to change example underscore fluid to home.html, just as we had it before. And I'll refresh in my home page. And now we've got this hello there example. OK, cool. Um, so this is a definitely a good start for us, but it's not really what we want to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into this home page and I'm going to make some changes. Now, hello there example. I'm going to call it try Django 1.8, not 1.7, 1.8. And then I have some example text in here that I'm going to go ahead and copy. Um, it's fairly straightforward of text. And this is just going to change out the paragraph text here. Refresh. There we go. So now we see this. That's good. And then view navbar docs. I don't want that. I want it to go instead. I want it to go to sign up. Um, so let's say join us. And I'll just say in here, I'll say join us. Refresh. There we go. Uh, and then I am going to actually end up putting a video on this side. Um, so try Django 1.8, we'll have the, all the text in the video on this side. Now, if you remember back to the grids, how would I do that exactly? Well, let's go ahead and look at Jumbotron content itself in the base.html and we'll see. So Jumbotron content does not really have its own container. I mean, container fluid does, but nothing inside of Jumbotron content, which is okay. So what we'll do is going back into our home.html, we're going to add a row here. So I'll do div class equals to row. So this is a real world implementation of what we just learned. And then we will go back and close off that row. So now that we have a row, we want to have columns here. So I could do div class equals to column. Um, I'll do extra small dash 12. And again, the if it's 12, it doesn't really matter if you set the view size. And I refresh in here, nothing changes as it shouldn't, right? Because I didn't actually do anything different. I just added a row and a column. So let's change it to column small and I'll change it to eight instead of 12. And I refresh in here. And now it's looking like I can actually probably put a video here. Um, so let's leave it at eight. That works for me. Um, and then we will actually set up a video here. So I will outside of that column. So I'm gonna tab this in and I'm gonna do div class equals to column small and let's think about it what size is it going to be well it's going to be four okay and then i'll close that out and then i'll even add just an inline style for now of background color being black and i'm just going to leave that as a placeholder ah but it's not very big so i'll do uh, minimum height being let's say 300 pixels and or instead of minimum height, we'll just give it a height. There we go. So now it has basically the size of a video. This looks like a good placeholder for the video anyway, right? The black background, that makes sense, right? Um, okay, cool. So now we've got kind of a little bit closer to a landing page that might make sense for us. Um, the one thing about this though, is since it's fluid, this is, this is kind of awkward. It probably doesn't look as good as it should. So I'm gonna get rid of being fluid and I'm gonna go back to being non-fluid. So going back into the base, let's get rid of fluid. So I really don't need to be fluid. So we get rid of the fluid there, brings that in quite a bit, uh, definitely changes the way it looks quite a bit as well. Before the video was probably a better size. Now it looks maybe like it'd be a little too small. So we'll have to do something about that. And then the MVP landing stuff. Well, do we want this page to be all, all the way like that as well? Uh, that's gonna be up to you. Um, I'm going to change it back to being non-fluid. But as you see, it does. it's very easy to change those two. Very easy if you do it the way we just did and not putting too many container tags everywhere, right? I had it in two spots. 
So now that I have this, um, let's go ahead and change this try Django 1.8 again. Back in our home page. And now I'm going to say six and six. So six and six. Save that. Refresh. Cool. So that's probably a little bit closer to what I would actually want it to look like um, in this case. Now, of course, you could make this whole thing fluid. There is a way to do that as well, but we're going to leave it just like this. And now my join side, I want this to be over here. So let's go ahead and change this from column small six to just column extra small, um, extra small to three. And we'll see what this looks like. But then I'll add this poll right class in here. So if I refresh, it pulls it to the right, which is cool. Um, because then we can do all sorts of things in here. And now I'm going to go back into my example text and I'm going to grab some other text in here. And I'm just going to use some blank text and maybe do something similar to what I did before uh, with some placeholder stuff. So let's go ahead and grab built with bootstrap, do with Django and bootstrap. So back into the home, uh, I'm going to add in div class equals to column extra small three. And then I'm just going to add a paragraph text here. And then you see that this ampersand, so the and sign, is um, running a little pink. The, that pink right there is being an error because basically it's wanting you to use and amp, which is stands for ampersand and HTML code. So if you refresh in here, the ampersand still comes in. Uh, it doesn't look too great, so we'll have to fix that in just a second. But I'm actually going to cut this. I want to show you what pull right does, uh, other than just what it just did. So if I paste this in three more times, I'm going to go ahead and add in the other code that I had here, or other text that is, just so we can see what the result will be. And okay, so now we've got all this stuff in here. Refresh in our home page. So cool. So now we've got these three columns and notice that even though this is the very top one, it's being pulled right. This is actually something that's kind of cool. So let's change this to being, um, we'll change this to small and small and small and small. There's a reason for this. You'll see it. All right. So if I refresh, nothing changes. Now, if I start breaking it down, it's breaking down, still staying the same width across, still breaking it down. And then all of a sudden, um, it's actually still at the very top. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because it's not pulling through correctly. So let's try that again. Let's see, save it over here. And it's not wanting to show us. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab this one and say pull right here. I want to show you how pull right works or pull left either way. So I refresh. So now the welcome's over here. All right. So built with Django and bootstrap is on the right. Uh, so regardless of the order it's in, uh, it's on the right. Now, of course, if I said pull right here as well, that's going to change the order as well. But notice the first pull right is still all the way to the right. Okay, cool. So now if I break it down, let me break it down. Notice built with Django bootstrap comes on top. It is now stacked on top. So the order that it's stacked here will be the order it's stacked down here too. And notice built with Django and Bootstrap um, is still being pulled to the right, like it's aligned to the right, uh, but it's still, it's very much stacked on top of everything, which is really cool. Uh, it does make a difference for us. So that's that. Uh, let's go ahead and go undo everything. And I'm gonna leave it just as this. All right, cool. Um, so now, now that we've got this stuff, let's go ahead and add a class to these created for everything. And I'll just say class equals to lead. So this is lead paragraph text. So I'm going to put it in each one. And there we go. So now that's kind of looking a little bit better. But since we have it here, maybe welcome, we would want it not to be h1 text, but instead be p class of lead. The title we can leave. Um, technically, it's a sign up title at this point, but we can leave it as welcome. And then we don't need the user stuff anymore. That doesn't make any sense any longer. So now we've got this looking a little bit better, right? And of course, we'd probably want some text and stuff over here. And we actually might want our, our other text to actually be aligned in the center. So I'm going to make a new class here 
and this is going to be a new concept as well. Uh, so this concept I'm actually going to stop here and then I'm going to show you in the next one how to use blocks with CSS. All right, so we will stop now and then we'll see you very soon.